Hello class, this is a video tutorial, a step by step tutorial of the questions um, from chapter 10 from the Fundamentals of Corporate Finance text, third edition, edition over uh, questions 10.1, 7, 5, uh, 9, and 10. And uh, let's begin. So questions 10, question 10.1, net present value. Riggs Corp Management is planning to spend 650000 on a new marketing campaign. They believe that this action will result in additional cash flows of 325000 over the next three years. If the discount rate is 17.5%, what is the net present value on this project? So let's unhide this. And of course, as always, um, the first step is to identify what the problem is, is telling you. Um, so we know that at year zero, the cash outflow uh, kept money out, 650000 And uh, additional cash flows, 325 over the next three years. So year one, year two, year three. Discount rate is 17.5. Um, so what is the net present value? So all we do is just find the net present value, but you can't just put NPV um, when you're typing in your formula because you also have to factor in the money out required in year zero, right? So all we do is we type in equals NPV, the rate 17.5 comma, value one, value two, three, and four. Um, actually, value uh, you you do value one, two, and three, which is actually the cash um, cash flow at year one, two, and three, respectively, and then you close parentheses and for you add back the year zero, all right. And when you do that, you get your answer, which is sixty two thousand three hundred thirty seven dollars and thirty four cents. And we can confirm with the back of the book that that's correct. So the the book just uh, the back of the book just says that it's sixty two three thirty seven, but this one is with the thirty four cents. All right. So now problem ten point three, net present value. Crescent Industries Management is planning to replace some existing machinery in its plant. The cost of the new equipment and the resulting cash flows are shown in the accompanying table. If the firm uses an 18% discount rate for projects like this, should management go ahead with the project? So let's unhide this. So um, th this is going to be given to you. Um, so we have year zero, cash outflow, money out uh, is the phrase that we've been using, and then cash flows for each year, uh, for years one through five, discount rate of 18%. The first step is to calculate the net present value. So we do the same thing that we did before, uh, equals NPV, we get the rate given, um, values one, two, three, four, and five are actually the cash flows for years one through five, not including year zero, close parentheses, and you do plus, and then cash outflow year zero. And when you do that, you get $134,986.27. Should management go ahead with the project? Yes, they should. All right. And if we confirm with the back of the book, that is the answer, 134,986. Uh, 10.7, uh, payback. Quebec Inc. is purchasing machinery at a cost of $3,786,966. The company's management expects the machinery to produce cash flows of $979,225, $1,158,886, and $1,881,000. Um, dollars over the next three years respectively what is the payback period all right so here we're given information already um, the, the outflow so we set it up like this so it can help us and the next step is to calculate the cumulative cash flows for the end of years 0 1 and 2 right so this is how you do it year 0 cash flow is going to be the same thing as 
what was given, right? That's money out year zero. Year two, the cumulative cash flow at the end of year one is going to be your cash flow at the end of year zero and the cash flow at the end of year one. So you do this plus that and you get that uh, 2.7 million. Your cumulative cash flow at the end of year two is actually going to be cash flow at year zero, one, and two. And if you can figure out the, the uh, cumulative cash flow for the end of year three, it's zero plus one plus two plus three. So now that we know that it's, that now what, we, what did we find out? We just found out that we are at a negative for every year until year three, right? So we know now that break even happens sometime between years two and years three. Uh, but we have to get specific. You can't just say, oh, it's two years or two and a half. We have to be specific. So in order to find the payback period, um, I just put the, kind of like the formula here. What you do is you do year two because you know that it's happening after this year plus parentheses, the cumulative cash flow at the end of year two, which is that one, divided by the cash flow at year three, which is this, close parentheses times negative one. All right, uh, and if you use that formula, uh, which is going to look like this, equals the y y end of the last year that you're at, at that you know you're um, you're at a negative, which is year two, plus um, open parentheses cash flow cumulative cash flow at the end of year two divided by the cash flow at the end of year three, close parentheses times negative one. You get your payback period, which is 2.87. So it would actually take you, the payback period is actually 2.87th of a year. All right. And we confirm with the back of the book. And yeah, that's our answer. Next, net present value. Blanda Incorporated Management is considering investing in two alternative production systems. The systems are mutually exclusive and the cost of the new equipment and the resulting cash flows are shown in the accompanying table. So you're going to get your information. If the firm uses a 9% discount rate for their production systems, in which system should the firm invest? So let's see. This information is going to be given to you. You have the cash flows for system one, cash flows for system two, and we have the 9% discount rate, right? So all we need to do is just find the net present value of both of these systems, right? But you have to remember that it's not just equals MPV and then all these figures. We have to do the cash flows for years uh, one to three and then add back our original investment. So we do equals MPV. We have our rate, which is 9%. Value one, um, which is the cash flow at the end of year one. Value two, cash flow at the end of year two. Value three, cash flow at the end of year three. Close parentheses plus cash outflow in um, the initial investment, year zero. All right, and when you do that, you get uh, $22,969.42. And we do the same thing for system two. So now we have um, the net present value of both of these. So the one with the highest net present value is uh, system two. And then you can you can kind of tell already just by looking at this because even though this requires um, you know fifteen thousand money out, you break even at the end of the first year, and then these two years you're up thirty grand. And then you know although this one requires a little bit more of of an investment this one you know 64th grand so it's kind of like a, a, a given but for this one you have to um, show me the net present value all right next uh, payback nakamichi bank corp has made an investment in banking software at a cost of 1.8 million management expects productivity gains and cost savings over the next several years if the firm is expected to generate cash flows of 586,212, 
713,277,431,199 and 318,697 over the next four years, what is the investment payback period? So we kind of did that already. Um, we, we have given, we have uh, year out, uh, money out year zero. We have our cash flows for each of the four years. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the cumulative cash flows just like in problem 1.7. So what I did here is I just brought down what was given already just to kind of like set it up for you in a different way. So we know that the cumulative cash flow for the year zero is just going to be the initial investment, right? The cumulative cash flow at the end of year one is going to be this. Um, the cash flow at the, the the cumulative cash flow year zero plus the cash flow of year one. Then you're gonna take um, the cumulative cash flow at the end of year one plus the cash flow at the end of year at the end of year two, and then you do the same for year three. You do the same thing again for year four, right? So, okay, and then when you work it out and uh, we identify payback period, which if, if you remember, we, we look at the cumulative cash flow and we say, okay, we're, we're at a negative here up until the sometime after the third year, right? So we know that the payback period occurs sometime between the third and the fourth year. So given that, we do equals year three plus open parentheses uh, the cumulative cash flow at the end of that year year three divided by the cash flow at the end of year four close parentheses times negative one that's our formula and when we do that we get a payback period of almost three and a half years a little less than three and a half years so this is um, if you're looking at a, a calendar you know that tw there's 12 months in a year if this said if this were uh, 3.5 then you can say that it would take three and a half years so three years and six months to pay back but this is just a little bit below that so you know um, payback period all right <clears throat> 10 uh, problem 10.10 AR, ARR average accounting return capital corp management is expecting to generate after-tax income of 63,435 over each of the next three years the average book value for the company's equipment over that period will be 212,500 if the firm's acceptance decision on any project is based on an ARR of 37.5 percent should this project be accepted let's find out so we have given right the after-tax income after the end of the first year, 63,435, which we get from here, at the end of year um, two, end of end of year three, because it's the same, you know, over the same three-year period, you're getting the same thing. So um, what we do is we take the average of these three which is going to be the same thing. I mean, if these figures change, you'd get a different average, obviously, but it's the same figure. And we know that the average book value is 212,500, and that's given from the problem. So what we do um, to find out, we have to find out the ARR. So the ARR is going to be equal to the three-year average, which is that, divided by the average book value and that's that's all you have to do so your ARR equals this right here um, through your average divided by your book value and you get 29.85 percent so that's your ARR uh, and since they have a an acceptance since they base their decision on an ARR of 37.5 percent the project should be rejected Okay, and this concludes our uh, video tutorial of the of some of the problems for the end of um, chapter 10 from the Fundamentals of Corporate Finance text, third edition by Perino, Kidwell, and Bates. As always, any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching.